I was in super, super shock. Super, super shock when I saw that happen. So, hot shot, Sinclair. Welcome to ISN Network, finally. We've been chasing you now for about, what, two years now, trying to get you on the channel, trying to get you on the WhatsApp <laughs> to get you down, but you finally made it, man. How's it going, my bro? Yeah, good, good. Just finished into a good training session. Um, first bar of uh, uh, my, my last uh, bout, which was, when was that? Uh, March. We're in... Uh, no, look, March, we're in that box. Did you box, box uh, last, was it last December? Six, no, 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 no. So uh, six weeks ago. Okay, okay, yeah, okay. Yeah, I didn't yeah. see that. I didn't see your last didn't fight. See that. No, it didn't go well. Okay. Yeah, yeah, so I um, uh, came back from um, US and I didn't anticipate a jet lag so it was like 10 days after we get back, about 10, about ten days I think, 14 days probably, something like that. Yeah. So I was after getting back from the US like, helping Josh Boatsy for his bout in uh, MSG. Yeah. And um, yeah, working through, working through, felt good. But then yeah, tapering off for the fight week, jet mm. lag kicked in. Yeah. And then I just, I was just, my trainer was like, no, pull the fight, you're not right, you're not right. And I'm like, look, mate, the, the adrenaline's going to kick in. Yeah. But, nah, mate, the adrenaline was in the crowd, eating popcorn, waving at me, saying, right, okay. you ain't winning tonight, bro. Yeah, yeah, I hear you. <laughs> so, it was a tough <laughs> night, but yeah, that's, uh, it's a good eye opener. So, okay. You mentioned um, earlier on about your... Um your experience in America with um, Andy Joshua and Joshua Boazzi. Let the people know um, about that experience. Oh, okay, yeah, now, um, with um, Joshua Boazzi, um, a good uh, close friend of mine, he's uh, got the same, he's in the part of the Andy Joshua man. So when uh, Josh Boazzi was boxing in uh, MSG in the U, we went out to Miami for his, uh, for that two, just over two weeks yeah. training camp. Um, about a week and a bit in New York again, training camp. It's good to see how how everything's done out over there at a higher level. Mm. And it's just to, it, was, it was it was comforting to see that the way things were done, that our trainer in the UK has got is, is on the right track. So yeah, we, we felt comfortable and was doing everything. So yeah, it was just seeing the difference between the US Commission yeah. and the British Boxing Board of Control. But it was a um, yeah. For that guy to go. Um, so, with the last fight, he was talking about. He said it didn't go well. What was what happened? Because I didn't watch the fight. Did you? Was it a loss? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, cool, cool. I lost some points. Okay. So now, again, like I said, um, it was the opportunity. But a box on the matching card, whatever. Then, um, yeah, got close to the fight. Then we, we found out in the states about the fight date. So I was like, okay. yeah, I'm gonna do it. I've already been training. Yeah. Already part of the training camp. So I'm halfway there, it's only three weeks, and then I'll be boxing. So then got back, so we're training throughout the US, training and training, everything's nice. Got back to the UK, a day's rest, two weeks solid training, again, everything was nice. But it's that week of the fight week, okay. where you start tapering off, that's when the jet lag hit. Okay. My trainer's watching me and says, oh, you're a little bit off. Did you peak too early, whatever, whatever. I want to, let's call the, show, call the fight, don't fight. I mm. said, mate, it's gonna be fine because the car's getting through the training camp. The car's getting through the sessions. Yeah. We're gonna um, the adrenaline will, will see me through. It'll be alright when I wake up. Someone's trying to hit me. Obviously, yeah. I'm gonna, I'm gonna my reflexes wake up. But it was on the night. It was mad. It just wasn't meant to be on that night. It was a situation of I could see everything, so I could either block or get out of the way. Right. But when it was time to return, it was everything was just too late, but too slow. Okay. So it was really uh, I, I would have lost on. The aggression. So okay, I'm waiting yeah. for him so that I can land because yeah. my my offense was too slow. Okay. So I had to wait for him and I would land. Catch, catch, land. But it was just it was just not as sharp as I usually are. So okay. yeah, that's what it was. You said it was on a matchroom card, who okay. headlined? Um it was kind of Ben headlined. Oh, you mean the next gen? Yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah, you yeah. fought on the next gen. Okay, yeah, cool. Yeah, what yeah. did you think of Conor Ben's fight? Oh, come on, he's explosive. Conor Ben, yeah, he's always exciting to watch. Always okay. exciting. He's a nice, and the thing that like was good about him as well, he's a nice guy. Talking to him, he's got time for you, whatever, whatever. Okay. I've, I've opened conversations. Certain time I've been with him at ringside, and we will critique fights. 
Okay. Oh, we'll say, oh, who do you think can do that? So yeah, he's got a good boxing brain and so forth. So yeah, he's always good to watch from his ferociousness in the ring and him being a nice guy out. Okay, talk to me about this new deal you've got with um, Dylan White. Um, talk to me about it, it sounds quite exciting. Okay, yeah, yeah. my um, management contract was uh, came to an end with my old manager. Then uh, I was part of a uh, tournament. And in that tournament, so I re signed with him. Yeah. And in that tournament, um, it didn't see its through to the end. So then it was got to a point where it was kind of sticky for us both. So we left amicably, so we earned in a good way. And then um, I thought, you know what? I'm, I'm sort of high risk at no reward. I can't see what's happening. Now, I've known Dylan for over 10 years, 10, 12, 15 years, I think. So it's like talking to him about it, he just said, look, You've been, you always been messing around. I've been trying to um, help you out for a while. Come, let me manage you. We'll sort things out for you. And then from then, that's where it just went. It was really just like, there was not really much to say because he's the one that spoke to me about turning pro because I was always helping other fighters, whatever. Yeah. So um, yeah, it, just, it was just actually a a progression that was bound to happen at some point. And mm-hmm. even other fighters that signed to Dylan saying to me, look, oh, just speak to Dill, look, your mates already speak to him. I'm like, no, 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 he's doing his thing. Mm. Yeah, whatever, whatever, you just kind of, yeah, take fools for granted, really. And then yeah. when, he, when he spoke to me, and said, look, what are you playing at? Then he said, you know what, let's get this done. Let's get this done. So who's your um, next, do you know who your next opponent is at all? No, I've just been given a few dates, uh, not even full dates, just months that I, I might be boxing. So it might be uh, uh, end of September, beginning of October. So we're in uh, July now, so we're looking at, yeah. Yeah, it's boxing season right now, yeah, so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So if, after Dylan's last victory against um, Rivas, if he doesn't fight again, um, does that mean he's just going to have a night where he's just promoting his boxers or would you just go on someone else's card? How, oh, yeah, how would that work? Yeah, yeah, yeah. we just go on somebody else's card. Where Dylan boxes, remember, it's still his own career. So because he's boxing, that doesn't mean that that's when his fighters will box. Okay. It, it just makes it a bit easier. I think, oh, right, okay. It, it's more entertaining because, like you said, the Rivas card had a lot of Dylan's yeah. fighters on that card. Yeah. So, um, yeah, it, it doesn't have any bearings as to whether you're going to box or not. If okay. He's so, yeah, you still, he basically is going to help guide your own career. Ah, oh, right, and okay. If it works for you to be on a card like that, which is anybody's, anybody's dream to be on a pay per view card. So it's, it's really, it's really a great honour to be on a car like that. Okay. But other than that, it'll, it'll get you on other shows or whatever is necessary to make your, your career blossom. Okay. I saw Dylan and his brother talking about um, he will fight one of the few brothers, and I think yeah. Dean will fight other few brothers. What do you, what do you think about that? Do you think um, the the and the White brothers can both take it if they well, were to fight each, fight you know both what, of yeah. them? I think yeah, you had those guys. I can't remember their name, and they done that. Do you my KSI yeah, and the thing? Yeah, they yeah, yeah. YouTube thing. Yeah. Now, those guys are not for anything to do with boxing. Right, yeah, now, yeah. If you can, if you were to make a card, Gillian, Tassie, and then their brothers on the undercard. Yeah. And you're telling people will be I will call, I'll, I'm going to want to watch that. I'm, I'm excited. Be interested because they're boxing families. That's not it. It's this internet let's steal your money business yeah it's yeah it's real boxing families so it will be interesting people will definitely tune in and buy it mm. definitely especially that they they've all got a, a public presence yes and a boxing brain yeah but that would be it will be interesting okay um joshua versus ruiz would you see that when that fight happens do you think joshua's got the opportunity to take it back or yeah. do you f- yeah, yeah yeah that's to me is no no that everyone has an off night at some point, it's just to me, I, uh, it was a shame that it was on the, the US debut. Mm. Yeah, that everyone's a human being. Because if he, the thing is, it's a lose lose situation. He was looking at the kid, how he looks aesthetically. Yeah, he looks like me. So, <laughs> even, even though you guys can't see him behind the camera, I look like Ruiz. <laughs> if, if, if AJ beat him, they are oh, well, I just some fat guy. Blah, blah, blah. Yeah, exactly. But they don't understand the guy, the reason they picked him is because he's the world beater, yeah. he's a good fighter. Yeah, he, it's not a beauty pageant. Yeah. So it, I, I wasn't shocked in the sense of it happening because they picked a good fight on purpose. I was just 
shocked and disappointed that it happened at that time being his US debut. And like I said, everyone has an off day. I believe that Andy Joshua's got a good team around him and he's got a boxing brain. He's going to know what went wrong. There's all these speculations. He's going to know what went wrong. He's going to fix it, get his belt back. I hear that. Adam Smith said um, that no champ has ever been able to overturn the first loss um, when they're defending their belt. So history says that Joshua actually ain't going to get his titles back. Oh, what do you mean? What, if they rematch straight every, away? Yeah, every rematch that's happened straight away. Adam Smith was bringing out the history books. Adam Smith? That's not true, Adam Smith. What about Lennox Lewis and Hassan Rahman? Okay, yeah. I mean, I see, I don't, I don't even know yeah. about that Le- one there. Le- Lennox Lewis got knocked out, I think it was fifth round in South Africa. Because he okay. was doing, well, the speculation is that he was filming Ocean's Eleven, I think it was. So his brain wasn't in, his mind wasn't in the game. But then when they rematched, he knocked him out in the fourth round and got his box back. Okay, okay, yeah. okay, okay. It, 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 I know what you mean. Sometimes there's a little gap between the rematch. Yeah, there yeah, can be. But I don't think this landscape at the moment doesn't permit that. Okay. Because that gap, someone bo- else boxes in Ruiz, the belts are somewhere else. Mm. That rematch situation doesn't happen. So yeah, exactly. Have to, yeah, you have to then fight your way back into contention to box this new person. Nah, get them back. I know it's an old saying of don't box someone that, that's made you look bad, but I, I, I think credit to Ruiz because he was a current boxer, but yeah. also looking at when I've, I've seen any visual, something, whether it was the travelling or whatever, yeah. his feet weren't awake, whatever, I don't know, he only he knows the answer. I'm a Joshua fan, but he looked like he was on holiday, man. He didn't look like, I would have thought he would have went round to many gyms and maybe sparred a lot. It, everything just looked too glamorous, like... Um, What's that guy's name? Um, what's that guy's name? Uh, the one that lost to Tony Bellew again. David Hay. When David Hay was having his pre-match warm-up for um, Bellew, Miami, living life, everything just looked like it was, I don't know. You yeah, know, but David Hay, come on, that's what he's about. He's a guy that played for a lifestyle. He's always been that. With the AJ, it, it was, that's just the scenery where it looked like. It and looked the, like. Yeah, that's, that's the scenery. It's not what he was doing. Like, uh, Miami, it just looks beautiful. Okay. That's the thing. It, it, yeah. You can't, even in the ghetto, you walk in and there's palm trees. Okay. It's, it's, it just looks like that. You see okay. what I mean? So I get what you mean. But no, the graph was there. The graph was there. Okay. I don't know. Yeah, okay. The was there. <clears throat> also, um, I want to mention about um, your mate, Joshua Buatzi. Do you think he could go all the way? Yeah, that's your question of a doubt. Mm. No question of a doubt. When he first stepped foot in a boxing gym, I, he came about nine, nine months after me. But um, I've always, always been in. Uh, combat sports since mm. I was about eight years old. Okay. So I kind of seen what good looks like if that makes yeah. sense. And when he come, like the natural ability that he had with, with speaking to me, he said he's never been to a boxing gym. And his work ethic and the fact that he used to ask questions and he would see him practicing and he would, would phone me and say, Yeah D, what are you doing? Let's practice this and that. Let's he's he's heart and mind is in it. And it's a show where he went to the Olympics, it wasn't even a, a name that was mentioned. And then he comes back with a bronze medal. And I always say to him, when you press the red button, we used to watch the Olympics. I didn't get to go out there, yeah. but I had a fight during the time okay. he was met the idea. But if he went to BBC, press the red button, his face would come. So he was like the face of, of the Olympic boxing yeah. during Rio because of how outstanding he performed. He performed, yeah. You see what I'm saying? And he's got a level head. He means it, he wants it, good heart, that you can't, it, it can't go wrong, you can't. Obviously you can't speak for him, yeah. um, but can you see him going up um, like another weight class or do you reckon he'll just stay where he's at? I don't know what, I think, um, I think he'll stay where he is because reason being, he started as cruiserweight. Yeah. As, in, in the amateurs, but he, the, the weight that we make, we make it easy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like heavy, makes it no problem. And um, it's really dependent on how he feels to go down. He might go up because he's still young. Yeah. But that'll be a natural progression, not a thing that you consciously say you want to go up. Okay. Right? You see what I'm trying to say? Yeah. Because he, he, he's solid and he's strong. Okay. Because, um, yeah, like, like myself, I started off as super heavyweight. Okay. In amateur boxing. And then I just naturally trained it without thinking about dropping weight. And yeah. I ended up at light heavy. So okay. it, it, maybe when you, and I've never, I haven't gone up. Yeah. So maybe his stature, like he's 26 now, it might be his, that might be his stamp. Okay, so okay. It might be his stamp. Um, last question before I let you go, because I know you've been quite busy. Um, Yard Kovalev, I need your 
boxing quick analysis on what you think is going to happen on the night yeah uh, that's a good one you know what it's hard to prove in the sense that I just think well done for Yard and his team because it, it, again it's a win-win situation they first everyone's saying oh yeah you're not fighting anybody then, he, then now he's fighting something people are saying it's too early yeah. so if he does lose to Kovalev so what he, everyone will say it's too early you see what I'm saying? This is okay. a Hall of Famer, he's a unified champion. If he beats him, that's outstanding. So all I'm saying is well done for even getting the deal done and stepping in the ring because it's win-win. That's what I think because you, I, I'm not even going to call it and say, oh, this and that and he looks this way and whatever. I just think, just go and prove everyone wrong. Do what, do you. You see what I'm trying to say? Yeah. Because it's a situation no one's going to be happy. When there's some people that's going to critique, no one's going to be happy. So you just go, it's a win-win situation. So go there, lay it all out, and the outcome be what it is. Cool, man. All right, well, thanks again for giving us some time on ISN Network. Yeah. Definitely going to catch up again. Thanks for coming um, out, Nah, no worries, man. Um, and obviously, you haven't told us an opponent, but hopefully that news will come out soon. That's it, that'll be good. And then um, we'll take it from there, and we'll definitely be following you around, man. Uh, peace.